Dear Cosmos connoisseurs, Maurice from the Netherlands here. Oh, he's from the Netherlands. And he was right from now. the Netherlands. Uh, wanting to know more about gas giants. Mm-hmm. Why are they named that way? Oh, come on, Maurice. <laughs> come on, Maurice. <laughs> no, maybe he's... Let's keep reading. All right, I'm going to keep reading. All right. Don't they... Uh, okay, you look at you. Keep reading. Don't you, you, they have a solid core and gaseous atmosphere, the same as terrestrial planets? Love the show. Keep it up. So in other words, why can't we just call them, um, you know, uh, bigger atmosphere planets? Okay. The difference is, mm-hmm. on Earth, Earth's atmosphere is to the solid planet what the skin of an apple is to an apple. Gotcha. You- Whereas on the gas giants... Mm-hmm. Their atmosphere is to their solid core what a peach is to its pit. pit. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I got what you're saying. Because, I mean, we have... Or our small, at, or our small. atmosphere is gas. So... It is gas. It is still gas. But... It ain't you, much of it. But it has nothing to really do with what we are, if you were to really look at it. Well, structurally... Structurally, we, yeah, yeah. I mean, it matters for our life and our ecosphere and everything. No, no, I'm saying if you were to take it away, we would still be a giant rock floating in space. Correct. There you go. Correct. You take away the atmosphere of the of, gas of, giants, of, right? They'd be unrecognizable. You got nothing, right? You, correct. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, right. Correct. So a peach to its pit, or smaller than a pit, right? I'm trying to think of what's a good analog there, like an apple to a seed. Yeah, but two, that's more seeds and yeah, apple it's more than seeds. I correct. Can, I, I know what you're saying. Right, 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 right. You're such a scientist. I was thinking, ah, like, you know what I mean? Okay, Seriously, lately, you just can't let an apple have <laughs> one freaking seed. Okay, that's correct. everybody know what the seed of an apple looks like. No, you will not. No, no, you're like, no, no you I'm cut the educator. apple open and you got uh, you got am, six seeds in there. So I got I, we got to have one seed. I'm educator man. Okay, and I've had some avocados lately. All right. They had really small pits. So somebody's breeding them things to be little. Yeah. Like when we grew up. No, they were giant. Giant. Yeah. Like the, yeah. So maybe avocado one day would just have a tiny little pit and it'll all be flesh on the outside. Mm. That'd be like the gas giants. Right. Yeah. So he's right to think, yes, they have a solid core. Right. But it's a tiny thing way down in the way down inside. Right. Mm-hmm. And then let me ask this on the for, for all uh, of them. Follow up from Maurice. No, though. Is that tiny core solid? Because of all the pressure that the gas makes? They are made out of the same ingredients as we are. Oh! Let me, let, me, let me be precise. Okay. Okay? All right. The original nebula that formed the sun and the planets. Okay. It's gas. Right. Mixed with heavy elements. Right. But they're just gaseous heavy elements. Okay. The gas giants, when they form, where do the heavy elements go? To the center. Thank you. And they make a solid mass there. Uh-huh. The lighter elements go up to the top, especially the hydrogen and the helium, mm. and it has enough gravity to hold on to them. They're moving fast, but they're not going to escape because the gravity is strong. Gotcha. For Earth, where do the heavy elements go? To the center. How about the gas? The lighter gases, the two lightest gases are hydrogen and helium. Mm. They're moving the fastest at any given temperature. Right. It's a fascinating law first discovered by James Clark Maxwell. Okay. We should do, we should talk about that. Oh, James Clark Maxwell? No, no to put his, oh. his Maxwellian distribution of velocities. Ooh. Let's do an explainer on that. We will. No, it's very cool. All right. Really cool. I'm about it. Okay, you got it? Cool. Okay, put a pin in that. Okay. All right, good. So, we're here, we're trying to hold on to the hydrogen and helium right. the way Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune did, but we can't because well, our gravity we don't is have stronger gravity. and it all just escapes and it back And it goes out. Okay. That's really cool. So we're stuck with the heavy gases, oxygen, nitrogen. Right. And carbon dioxide. Okay. Right. So that's how that works. That's how that works. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that was great. Okay, cool. I like when those simple stuff. That's and of course, within the solid core, mm-hmm. the heavier stuff is in the center of the solid core. Right. Right. And what's in our solid core? We got iron. Iron. There. And iron That's is heavier than everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's heavier than the rocks. Right. Rocks float. <laughs> on, compared to iron. Compared yeah. to iron. Yeah. yeah. All right. Super cool, man. This is uh, Vasco Vukov. And Vasco Vukov says, Hello, Dr. Tyson, Mr. Nice. Uh, this is Vasil Vukov from Sofia, Bulgaria. Nice. Uh, we're trying to find aliens, but if we want to hide from them, what should we and could we do, even if they point their sensors straight towards us? How stealth could the Earth possibly be? I love that. Okay, so now watch. <laughs> okay. All right. You ready? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's go back in time. Mm-hmm. TV signals 
Right. The reason why you, this old timers, everyone else just won't care what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. In the day, you could get radio stations from cities that were far away, but you wouldn't get TV stations. Mm -hmm. TV waves, you have to be in a direct sight line to the television transmitter. Okay. So you have to have a transmitter everywhere for TV. Mm -hmm. So TV was very local in the day. Radio waves, okay, especially shortwave, but also AM radio, its waves had the right frequency to reflect off the ionosphere of the Earth. Ooh. And it could move, it could send a signal beyond Earth's horizon. That's crazy. Some would leak, but others would bounce back. Right. Point is, th these modes of communication had leakage, especially television waves. Mm -hmm. So, someone eavesdropping on Earth, and they're, let's say, 80 light years away, they're getting the earliest radio signals that have been emanating from Earth at the speed of light. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. <laughs> Dateline. <laughs> <laughs> and other, there's howdy doody. Right. There was, uh, and then the TV signals would start coming in, early TV, the honeymooners. Uh-huh. If they want to decode our civilization. Right, they think that we're all abusive. <laughs> <laughs> who like to threaten our wives with violence. With violence by, nah. to the moon. To the moon. And, and that's when people laughed at that. Right, right? exactly. Right. I think they laughed because she was <laughs> defiant, even in the face of right. that exactly. threat of violence. Oh my God, you are so funny. You're going to beat your wife, huh? Right, right, yeah, right. It's exactly. crazy. It's crazy, crazy times. It's crazy. Cra crazy times. So that's how they'll learn how men and women interact. That's exactly. their benchmark. So this continues throughout all the sitcoms and all the TV that, and, and they'll see the war, the war broadcasts and right. everything. And then they get right up to Puff Daddy and they goes, nothing has changed. <laughs> no. They get to the 1980s mm -hmm. and signals start disappearing. Uh-oh. What the heck is happening? People are using cable. That's right. Okay. So one yeah. of the earliest shows, which I feared would be first seen by aliens, but I think we're protected, is Beavis and Butthead. Right. That was MTV. And you got that via cable. Right. Okay. That was not transmitted into space. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> you want the aliens. Let me tell you something. The one thing I want the aliens to see is, <laughs> are you threatening me? <laughs> I am the great Cornelia. <laughs> Cappuccino. So a lot of what's happening today is protected from leakage for right, that reason. Right. Because it's, well, it's a closed system. It's a closed system. It's, all, it's cable. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so that's my first point. Second point, here's an, just an interesting fact. If you're communicating through space mm -hmm. and you have a signal, mm -hmm. you don't want anyone to intercept it. Okay. You want to encrypt it. Right. Okay. Yeah, well. The perfect encryption is so well encrypted that it is indistinguishable from the din of radio noise in the universe. Oh, that is, now that is awesome. It is that completely, is because think about it. Think about so it. You're no, 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 using the, 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 think about okay, it. Okay. If there was something about your signal that was different, then I would know somebody created it. Exactly. Okay? So you need something to encrypt it so that it looks like noise, and you have the noise decoder on the other side. Look at that. Okay. And when you say noise, you are, you're talking about the cosmic microwave background. I need the all of the radio noise in the in, universe. In the universe. Okay. You, if you take a, a radio antenna pointed anywhere, right. there's like noise. Right. Of course. Yeah. Okay. That's the static. Sh it's the yeah, static. Yeah. Okay. So if I see something that doesn't look like the static, right. there's a signal there. Okay. Even, even if it's even if it is encoded, right. I know there's a signal there. Yeah, yeah, because it's different. It's different from the static. Right. So the perfect encodings That's... would be indistinguishable from static. That's... So if a, if a planet wanted to hide right. from alien eavesdropping, they would make sure that all signal transmission was so thoroughly encoded that it was indistinguishable that it from static. it looked like the noise of the universe. Correct. That's Great. Yes. That is yes. really great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And now it's a little tough because you might have more noise here than somewhere else. Right. That could give you away. Right. Right. Exactly. There's, there's the background in and then there's a bright noise yeah, spot yeah. here. So there's a, an anomaly of, of noise. Of noise. Of noise. Yeah. Right. So you have to figure that one out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But. That's cool though. Yeah, it's very cool. Another way to hide from aliens. Yeah. 
you get one generation of astronomers to send a plaque out into space. Right. Intended to be read by aliens. Mm -hmm. This is a plaque from Pioneer 10 and 11. Right. Which was launched in the 1970s. And some of this iconography was also used for the Voyager missions. Right. But notice at the bottom, there's the solar system. There's the solar system. There's the sun. The and sun the and Mercury, Mercury Venus, Venus Earth, Earth. And Earth, there's a line coming from Earth. Right. That shows where this spacecraft right. came this, from. Because yeah. this is a, this is a life-size right. of the spaceship relative to hum the two human figures. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you get one generation to try to talk to aliens innocently, not knowing the aliens are evil. Mm -hmm. They're going to come and suck our brains out. Right. But let them show a nine-planet solar system. <laughs> right. Yeah. This one has Pluto. Right. They're going to come looking for us because this, uh, this is our return address, by the way. Right. The spider yeah. diagram. That's our distance to pulsars in the galaxy. You can triangulate on that and come right back to our vicinity. Why would we do that? In the <laughs> Why would we ever do that? That is so. It seemed like a good idea at the time. That's insane. It, you know? I know you wouldn't give your email to a That's another human stranger yeah. in the street. That's like going on vacation and putting all your plans on social media. Hey, guess what? We're leaving on the tenth, and we'll be gone for two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> That's oh. a perfect time to come rob my house, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now they come back looking for a nine planet solar system and ours is not that. Well, okay. And, and the reason why would they not think it? Because Pluto is represented in this as a planet, as, as a planet, as the same size as, the, as like right. Mercury and right. other, other objects here. Mm -hmm. And it's just not. Guys, uh, we only see eight planets here. We got the wrong one. There you go. At the wrong keep, solar keep moving. system. Nothing to Let's see here. Keep, nothing go. keep going. All right. Except for that one planet with all the trash out on his front lawn. <laughs> what is that? What's going on there? <laughs> no sign of intelligent life. <laughs>